Yesterday on September 9th, Major League Baseball decided that they are going to be implementing three massive new rule changes for the 2023 season that honestly affect the Mariners in a lot of different ways. These rule changes are as such, this is the pitch clock, a limitation on defensive shifting, and larger bases. Now this specific article is coming from MLB Trade Rumors, however, how it's going to be affecting the Mariners is going to come straight from us, and we'll tell you how it is. We'll run through these from the least likely to impact the Mariners to the most likely to impact the Mariners, and let me tell you, some of these are going to make Julio Rodriguez such a better player, it's going to be absolutely insane, and some of these might hurt the Mariners in the long run. Now we're going to go ahead and start with a pitch clock. Now the pitch clock is pretty simple. As soon as the pitcher gets the ball thrown back to him after a pitch is thrown, he has 15 seconds between pitches when the bases are empty, and he has 20 seconds between pitches with a runner on base to release the next pitch. Now this is all part of Daddy Manfred's way of trying to speed up the game. I know how much we all love Rob Manfred. Homie is just so so good at his job Daddy, chill. the implementation of the pitch clock in the minor leagues shortened the average nine inning game down about 26 minutes making each game maybe like two and a half to two hours and 45 minutes that was the length of the average nine inning game now as for the mariners the pitch clock doesn't really affect them all that much per fan graphs pace metric you can see here that pitchers like robbie ray marco just the starters they're all right around 20 seconds robbie ray being the longest at 22.7 robbie Ray will have to speed it up a tiny bit because he needs to get it within 20 seconds when he has a runner on base and 15 when he doesn't have a runner on base but that's not such a huge deal only a couple pitchers in the Mariners bullpen are going to be all that affected by that and that's Andres Munoz and Diego Castillo both of them hover right around 25 seconds but honestly when it's all said and done it's not going to be that big of a deal for the Mariners specifically I, for one, am not a huge fan of shortening the games by that much. If I'm paying a ton of money to go to a baseball game, I want to be able to sit there, hang out, and relax. I understand why they're trying to speed it up and kill some of the dead time, and I can't say that I blame them, but I still want to be at the ballpark longer. Then we have the defensive shift restrictions. Now, this is going to be super, super interesting. Basically, you've seen throughout the history of baseball in the past, like, 10 or so years, the Mariners and baseball players in general have been doing massive shifts, including like ones against Joey Gallo where everybody's on the right side of the infield. Absolutely insane to see, but that's going to be going away in 2023. They will have to have two infielders on either side of second base, and none of those infielders can be in the outfield grass, and you cannot have any of your infielders switch sides. So you're going to have a lot more traditional look to players on the infield. Now, this doesn't mean that they can't shift at all. As long as you have your third baseman and your shortstop on the left side of second base, they can be anywhere over there in the dirt, meaning that you could have a Eugenio Suarez and J.P. Crawford standing right next to each other if you want to. For the Mariners specifically, this might be kind of a big deal. As you look at them, and they are the fourth most shifted team in baseball. They shift more than almost everybody else in the league, and it works out for them really, really well. For infield positioning, Fielding Bible has the Mariners with 19 runs saved in the shift and they have negative three runs saved when they're not in the shift meaning that when they're not in the shift they are getting shelled compared to when they're in the shift they're saving 19 runs that puts them at ninth on the list for defensive runs saved overall and most of them coming from in the shift again the mariners shift just about as much as anybody in baseball and the good teams do it you look at like the blue jays the braves they're all at the top of the amount of teams that shift and the amount of shifts they run throughout the game and the Mariners being right up there was super, super helpful for them. But with Perry Hill as the infield coach, I mean, you could only hope that he can maybe help the Mariners get to some balls in traditional defensive positioning that maybe they wouldn't have been able to before. Now, this is going to be kind of a two-for-one deal. And in my opinion, this is the absolute biggest change to baseball that's going to make the Mariners so much of a better club than it was before. And we're going to do like a part A and a part B. So for part A, we're going to have bigger bases. Bases are going from 15 inches to 18 inches. Now, not only is this going to help out with players just not getting stepped on at Ty France at the Guardians, but it's also going to help for would-be base stealers. As players like Julio or Sam Haggerty, they're going to have more room to grab onto a base when they're sliding into it or sliding through it that hopefully they'll be able to get out of the way of some sort of 
incoming tag from the second baseman and i think this is going to help them out a lot mlb trade rumors goes on to say that bigger bases will reduce the distance between first and second and second and third by four and a half inches thereby encouraging offensive clubs to attempt to steal bases more frequently and generally to be more aggressive on the base paths and to go along with would-be stealers we also have that pitchers can only disengage the rubber twice per plate appearance that basically means that per plate appearance pitchers can only pick off twice and so for example if you're julio there's a really good chance that the pitcher picks over twice and at that point you're basically free to steal the bag now the pitchers can pick over again but if they do not get the runner out it results in a balk meaning the runner gets to the next base anyway the minor leagues have seen a massive uptick in stolen bases ever since this rule was implemented and there are already a few people in the minor leagues right now that have already stolen 70 plus bases so the return of the stolen base is coming in droves in 2023 and you think about julio who already has upwards of 25 stolen bases could you imagine julio stealing 40 plus in 2023 if they can only pick over twice and if they do it again and they don't get you out then it's a balk you have a really good chance to see Julio running a lot more because he basically, in the back of his mind, knows there's a really, really slim chance that this pitcher is going to pick over and Julio could just take off for second base. Julio Rodriguez is going to become an even better leadoff hitter because he'll be able to steal bags and turn a single into a double, a single into a triple, and it's going to be absolutely insane to see just how much the Mariners run next year and if this possibly affects the way they go into the offseason. Speed is going to be so much of a bigger weapon going into 2023. The Mariners could be reaching out to someone like Trey Turner, who, of course, we would love to have at second base or shortstop, but also one of the fastest players in the game. Now, of course, this also has an adverse effect on the pitchers and the catchers because because of course the Mariners aren't all that good at controlling the run game as it is and now if they can't pick off as much man they're gonna have a lot harder of a time controlling teams like the Astros that have some pretty quick players on the team and it's really gonna rely on Cal and his arm strength and his pop time to get the ball down there in time to get a runner out because again would-be base stealers are gonna go way up which means theoretically speaking catchers are going to have a lot less time to throw runners out and that metric is going to basically be going away as for every rule change, there is a pro and a con for everything that could be happening in Major League Baseball. For the Mariners, this is going to have a very, very big effect on the catching game, including Cal Raleigh's emergence into the Mariners' starting catcher. Now, there's a lot to talk about with the big dumper, and we cover all that in this video here that Joe made. I appreciate you guys checking out this video, and go Mariners!